theories of physics are based on symmetry. Let's take an example. Yeah, consider symmetry of translation. This leads to the law of conservation of momentum. Another one. Um, symmetry in time. That leads to the law of conservation of energy. In particle physics, we got something similar called gold symmetry. And the gold symmetries lead to the laws of conservation of quantum numbers. And this is very useful. Uh, so let's think what is a conservation law. If you take a system which is closed, meaning isolated from the rest, whatever quantity you're considering to be conserved needs to stay the same. Take, let's use conservation of charge. If I have a universe with a certain amount of charge Q in it, and this universe is isolated from the rest, the charge Q will remain the same. Whatever happens inside the universe, right? Q will always stay the same. We can use this idea to predict if some reactions in particle physics are possible or not. Let's start with something we know is possible, beta decay. So you know that in beta decay, let's consider beta minus, right? That's a neutron that becomes a proton plus an electron plus an antineutrino of the electron. A neutron is up, down, down, and a proton is up, up, down. So actually this is a down becoming an up plus an electron plus an antineutrino of the electron. Let me remove these. Now, to check if this is possible, I suggest to my students to just write down the quantum numbers Q, B, L, and S. For the down quark, we know that the charge is minus one third. For the up quark, it's plus two thirds. For the electron, it's minus one. And the neutrino, the antineutrino, is zero. Minus one third is equal to two thirds minus one. Check. The law of conservation of charge is respected by this reaction. Let's try the baryon number. The neutron is a baryon. Yeah, I could use also the down quark. Let's use this one. Down quark has got a baryon number of one third, the up quark of one third, the electron zero, antineutrino of the electron zero. It's equal to the baryon number. Check. This reaction respects the conservation of the baryon number. I could have used neutrons and protons, one and one, zero, zero. It would have worked too. Lepton number. So down, uh, it's, it's a quark, so it doesn't have a lepton number, neither does the up. The electron is actually a lepton, so plus one, and the antineutrino of the electron is a anti-lepton, so minus one. Zero equals zero, one, minus one, zero. So check. Let's check strangeness now. Are these strange? No. Are these quarks? No. Check. This reaction is possible. In this reaction, we have a negative kaon plus a proton that transform into a positive pion plus a sigma minus, which is a baryon. So let's start. Baryon number. Baryon number, this is not a baryon. The proton is a baryon. This is not a baryon. That's a baryon. So we got one equals one. Check. Charge, negative charge, minus one. Proton has got a positive charge. The pion, plus one. The sigma minus, negative one. Minus one plus one is equal to plus one, negative one. So, up, check. Let's check the strangeness. Well, k minus, that must be, let me think, an anti-up and a strange. Minus two thirds, minus one third is minus one. So, it has some strangeness. So it's going to be minus one. The proton has no strangeness. The pion is only made of up and down, so no strangeness. And the sigma has got a strange quark, so minus one. Check. And finally, let's look at the lepton number, where well, we don't have to think too much because there's no leptons involved, so zero equals zero. Check. This reaction is possible. In that case, we have a lambda, which is UDS, transforming into a pion positive plus a pion negative. I can see immediately that won't work. That won't be possible because when I look at the baryon number, this is a baryon and these are mesons, so no baryon number. 
not check. I don't need to continue further. I know this is not possible. Let's play with leptons now. We have this antimuon that decays into an anti-electron plus electronic neutrino and a muonic antineutrino. Baryon number, well, we know it's going to be zero and zero, right? Because there's no baryons involved. Charge, plus one, plus one, zero, zero, check. Strangeness, ah, there's no quarks involved, so there won't be any strange. Lepton number, minus one for the antimuon, minus one for the anti-electron, plus one for the electronic neutrino, minus one for the muonic antineutrino. So it works, right? We've got minus one equals minus one. But be careful, because if I did this, for example, it would work too, right? The neutrino of the muon would still give you a lepton number of plus one. L is actually the electronic lepton number plus the muonic lepton number plus the tauic lepton number. And all these components need to be conserved also. So for example, let's consider the electronic lepton number. This is not an electron, so zero. This is a positron, so minus one. This, so the muonic neutrino, is not electronic, so it's zero. And this would be zero too, nothing to do with the electron. So you see, that's not conserved. If I do the muonic uh, lepton number, that would be minus one, that would be zero, that would be plus one, that would be minus one. Again, you have minus one equals zero, so it's not conserved. In order for this to be conserved, that needs to be an electronic neutrino. Like this, you would have plus one here, and here you'd have zero. And then you could check. There is one exception, though, that you need to know within the scope of a high school program in physics. We've just seen here that all the quantum numbers need to be conserved if we want to verify that a reaction is possible. There's one exception. If strangeness is not conserved, you would say, okay, this reaction is not possible. It's not always true. If it is the weak force which is involved in the reaction, then it is acceptable to consider strangeness as not conserved. The reaction will still be possible. The reason for this is that the consequence of the action of the weak force is that one quark can change into another. So if in the reaction, the weak force changes a strange quark into something else, like a down one up, of course strangeness will change. And the reaction is still possible. To give you an example, we have a negative sigma that transforms into a neutron and a negative pion. So the negative sigma is made of down, down, and strange, the neutrons down, down, and up, and the negative pion down and anti-up. Baryon number, one, one, zero, conserved. Lepton number, zero everywhere. Charge, negative one, negative one, neutron is neutral, so zero, conserved. Strangeness, negative one, because we have a strange quark in the sigma, but we don't have any strangeness here. So strangeness is not conserved. However, in the text, you should have information about what force is involved. If they say it is a strong force that creates this reaction, then you know it's not possible. But if the text says it is a weak force which is involved, then the reaction is still possible. Got it? It might also inform you in the text that the weak force is involved in a hidden manner. They will give you the rate of reaction, meaning they will tell you the half-life of the reaction, say how long it takes for half of the sample to react. If they say that it goes very fast, something like 10 to the minus 28 seconds to react, you know it's the strong force which is involved. So if the reaction is fast, this is not possible. On the other hand, if they tell you that the reaction rate is something like 10 to the minus 11 seconds in this range, then it would be the weak force which is involved. In that case, this reaction is possible. So read the text carefully. 
They love to put these kind of questions at exams. So keep it in mind. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope it was useful to you. Yeah, now you should be able to look at a particle physics reaction and predict, is it possible or is it not possible? And that just by looking at the quantum numbers of the reactants and the products. Homework! Yeah, I've been working hard on this video, so your turn now. You've got six reactions here. Discuss in the comments if they are possible, and if some are not, why? Which law of conservation has been violated? If you need the table of the standard model of particle physics, you know that lists all the particles with their quantum numbers, then just look in the description, they'll put some links, so you'll be able to consult it and try to do these exercises. If you got something good out of this video, don't forget to press the like button, click, and even better, subscribe, click, because when you subscribe, you'll have access to the other videos. And even better, press the little bell, click. Like this, you'll get notified of any new videos I'll be posting. And I've got a nice list coming up. I think we're done here. So I'll see you soon at the next episode of Physics Made Easy.